for our next news special report. Welcome back. And now we're delving into a story of defiance, drama, and deep political intrigue. Imagine this, a high-profile figure closely linked to the highest echelons of power openly defies a congressional subpoena. Yes, Hunter Biden has once again moved the goalposts, sidestepping a critical deposition and igniting a firestorm on Capitol Hill. In a moment, we'll bring you the explosive conversation between House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer and the press, and we'll dissect Hunter's own words during his unexpected Capitol Hill speech. The story isn't just about evasion, it's a saga that questions the integrity of our republic's processes. Stick with us for this special report because you don't want to miss the revelations we have in store, and stay tuned for a final thought that puts the entire situation into perspective for every American. Now, before we dive deeper, a quick reminder, the hard-hitting news we deliver is made possible by sponsors like the Patriot Gold Group. Think about it. Just as Hunter Biden's evasion is disrupting the usual order, the financial world is also facing its share of upheavals. Gold has soared past $2,000 an ounce amid global tensions and economic uncertainties. It's reminiscent of the 1970s crisis, paralleling the dramatic rise in national debt and gold's value. Remember, Donald Trump warned of the risks of the U.S. dollar global, global standard. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Patriot Gold Group. The number's on the screen, 888-857-9437, and safeguard your assets. Mention Next News for unparalleled service. Now, tonight we're tackling a story that's causing ripples across the political landscape. Hunter Biden, a name that's become synonymous with controversy, is in the spotlight yet again. This time, he's defied a congressional subpoena, opting instead for a public statement on Capitol Hill. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The main event, however, unfolded when House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer confronted the press. His exchange with a Washington Post reporter was nothing short of fiery. She pressed Comer on evidence of wrongdoing, to which Comer pointed out checks to Joe Biden as potential influence peddling. She attempted to downplay the $40,000 check as law firm money rather than funds from a Chinese energy firm and was met with skepticism from Comer. This exchange wasn't about just the facts. It's a battle of the narratives. Watch. To Hunter Biden and, and the Biden family. Look, I think every American has a simple question. What did the Bidens do to receive the tens of millions of dollars from our enemies around the world? That's a simple question. But Chairman Comer, do you acknowledge that you haven't answered that question and that you found no evidence of wrongdoing or criminal conduct? We found some very serious evidence that... Uh, but you look at no, 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 no. The it. checks. There's two checks to Joe Biden Those from his brother that the retains. money to give Joe Biden was through influence peddling. One was through Those the American. No, 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 for a loan repayment. I should have a check going so you're to you for two hundred forty. Joe Biden's attorneys of inventing the, the, the law firm that represented of, all the, the shell companies money. That, that represented all the shell companies. You think those lawyers have what, what do money. you think? You're you're defending them. I mean you're acting as the criminal defense attorney. Run to are, you, you, are you positive that that money came from Joe Biden? You the same, the are you money, positive? The same no, bank no. account. Look, we have a lot of questions. Next question. Are you going forward with contempt? I'll let you. There's a process you have to follow. You have to file a report. So we will begin looking at that. Um, both uh, the lawyers for the Oversight Committee, the lawyers for the Judiciary Committee, will move in that direction. But look, when Congress asks you to come. You're supposed to come and, uh, and co come and testify. Devin Archer testified. Last, last, last thing, we also found checks from one of Hunter Biden's shell companies that were going into a, an account for Joe Biden. We the they said that was a that loan, loan repayment. Oh, yeah, everything's a loan repayment. Well, the, the, the press, Raptor, Biden, Hunter was, Biden will have an opportunity in deposition to come in and explain that. But Chairman, that was memorialized that. in emails that, we, that you guys leaked from Hunter Biden's laptop. Thank you. I would like to have asked Hunter Biden about man act violations, Wait, sex yeah. trafficking women across the Thank you all very much. The Daily Caller sheds more light on this. Bank records released by Comer revealed that Biden received a $40,000 check in 2017 following his family's dealings with Chinese business associates. The money trail, involving several accounts, raises questions about the nature of these transactions. Hunter's business venture with CEFC, Hudson West III, is at the heart of this. Hunter Biden's response, well, he's agreed to testify, but only in a public hearing, not the closed-door setting demanded by Comer and Jordan. This strategic move shifts the playing field, allowing Hunter to control the narrative in the court of public opinion. But Hunter's speech on Capitol Hill was more than just a statement, it was a performance. He emphatically denied his father's financial involvement in his business dealings. Quote, my father was not 
financially involved in my business, he stated. However, a recent revelation throws a wrench into this narrative. New York Times, in what appears to be a blatant act, reported Hunter's statement without the crucial word financially. This alteration fundamentally changes the meaning and context of Hunter's claim. The implications of this profound. The omission suggests a potential alignment with certain media outlets with the interests of the Biden family casting doubt on the objectivity and integrity of the reporting. This is not just about a misquote. It's about the credibility of our news institutions. Meanwhile, Hunter's legal team, sensing the gravity of the situation, has been proactive. They set a podium on Capitol Hill where Hunter played the role of the victim, meticulously articulating his version of the truth. It's a masterclass in controlling the narrative, but is it enough to, pay, to sway public opinion? Let's take a look at one moment from that. Let me state as clearly as I can, my father was not financially involved in my business, not as a practicing lawyer, not as a board member of Burisma, not in my partnership with a Chinese private businessman, not in my investments at home nor abroad, and certainly not as an artist. Certainly not as an artist. Comer and Jordan, undeterred, warned Hunter last week of the consequences of skipping the closed-door deposition. The choice was clear. Comply with the subpoena or face contempt of Congress proceedings, but Hunter, seemingly confident in his approach, chose the latter. The subpoena issued November 8th was more than a formality. It was a clear directive, one that Hunter chose to ignore. Comer's response was firm, quote, Hunter Biden is trying to play by his own rules instead of following the rules required of everyone else. This is not just a legal battle. It's a clash of wills and a test of the system's integrity. At the heart of Comer and Jordan's investigation is the suspicion of an internal influence peddling scheme involving the Biden family. The crux of the matter lies in the tens of millions of dollars the family allegedly received from foreign business partners with no clear product or service in exchange. The depth of these allegations paints a concerning picture of corruption at the highest levels. The House also seeks testimony from Hunter's uncle James Biden, along with several former business associates. The scope of this inquiry isn't limited to Hunter. It encompasses the entire Biden family's business dealings. This is not about one man's actions. It's about the potential misuse of influence and power. As we explore these allegations, we must consider the historical context Contempt of Congress is a serious charge, one that can lead to fines and imprisonment. The severity of Hunter's actions and the possible repercussions cannot be understated. This is about holding individuals accountable regardless of their last name status. Now, let's not forget the broader implications. Joe Biden, then a presidential candidate, had categorically denied discussion of business with his son or his associates. However, evidence suggests otherwise, with Joe Biden reportedly attending dinners with his son's business associates. This contradiction raises questions about the president's honesty and transparency. In the stunning turn of events, Comer and Jordan have now initiated contempt of Congress proceedings against Hunter. Their joint statement is a clear message. No one is above the law. This move signals a commitment to uphold accountability and transparency within our government. As this drama unfolds, we're reminded of President Biden's past stance on congressional subpoenas. When asked about individuals defying subpoenas, Biden was clear. They should be prosecuted. This flashback adds another layer to the current situation, highlighting a double standard in the application of justice. Watch. Talk to you so much today, you're not going to want to talk to me anymore. Sir, do you... What's your message to people who defy congressional subpoenas on the January 6th committee? I hope that the committee goes after them and uh, holds them accountable. Should they similar. be prosecuted by the I, Justice I do, Department? yes. Sir, do you support term limits for the Supreme Court? The question now is, what will be the outcome of these proceedings? Hunter's evasion has set the stage for a significant legal and political showdown. The implications of this case extend far beyond the halls of Congress. They touch on the very pillars of our republic's justice system. As we navigate these turbulent waters, it's clear to remember the foundational values of our republic, accountability, transparency, and the equal application of law. They're not just ideals, they're the bedrock of our society. In a notable shift, the GOP caucus appears to be pivoting, seeking to renegotiate Hunter Biden's testimony while advancing an impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. This hesitation in pursuing a contempt vote against Hunter, as suggested by Jim Jordan, signals a potential strategic misstep. The reluctance to decisively act following Hunter's subpoena defiance raises serious questions about GOP unity and determination. 
This development suggests an underlying lack of consensus among Republicans to hold Hunter accountable. It's a telling moment that exposes possible rifts within the party, highlighting a scenario where the president's son, amid significant allegations, can ignore a legal summons without immediate repercussion. Jordan's remarks hinted a procedural approach, yet the strategy and its implications stir debate and concern. This turn of events is a critical test of the GOP's commitment to upholding justice and may significantly impact our public trust in political institutions. Here is that moment. Next question. Are you going forward with contempt? I'll let you. There's a process you have to follow. You have to file a report. So we will begin looking at that. Um, both uh, the lawyers for the Oversight Committee, the lawyers for the Judiciary Committee, will move in that direction. But look, when Congress asks you to come, you're supposed to come and, uh, and co come and testify. Devin Archie. Thank if you got value from this report, tap subscribe. It's not just about staying informed. It's about being part of a community that values truth and justice. As we conclude, let's be clear. Hunter's blatant defiance and the media's complicity in shielding the Bidens are egregious affronts to our republic's principles. This episode isn't just a mere political scuffle. It's a glaring example of double standards and the erosion of journalistic integrity. The audacity of Hunter's evasion, coupled with the media's selective reporting, is an insult to every American who believes in the sanctity of the rule of law. In stark contrast, the commendable tenacity of Chairman Comer and Congressman Jordan in pursuing justice is a beacon of hope. Their relentless efforts to hold the powerful accountable are praiseworthy, exemplifying the true spirit of public service. Their unwavering commitment to uncovering the truth, despite the smokescreen created by political bias and media distortions, is exactly what our republic needs. The story matters deeply. It's a wake-up call to all who cherish fairness and accountability. We must stand firm against those who believe they're above the law and those who would distort the truth for political gain. Our republic deserves nothing less. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.